Hello and welcome to another episode of the Alter Your Health podcast, live edition here on Facebook. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Dr. Benjamin Alter. I am with, of course, our co-host, Dr. Susanna. Hello. And uh, yeah. And we've got Winnie with us still. She's chilling in the van. We are in the van and we do apologize for maybe less than optimal audio quality. We just were kind of on a time crunch and couldn't set up our, you know, studio equipment, but hope, hopefully it will do. <laughs> I think it'll be just fine. So today we are talking about protein and anything else we feel inspired to talk about, but we thought, hey, let's start off with protein. But today we are going back into the macronutrients. The third macronutrient is protein. And um, it's it's great timing because we actually just listened to a wonderful radio show yeah. um, by Anthony William. We're, we're fans of Anthony Williams' work. And um, so we've got all sorts of um, great ideas about protein fresh in our heads. Yeah, we, we really love Anthony William, the medical medium. And I know a lot of our Instagram followers also are Anthony William fans. And, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate his enthusiasm and his energy and his kind of drive behind his, his mission. Um, and I, yeah, that, I'm really inspired by the work, some of the work that he's doing. Um, and I think there's, there's some deficiencies, you know, as with anyone, you know, it's like, it's important to kind of take, take something and then build upon it rather than just take it for what it is. And then just, you know, end end the journey of, of learning. So, so that's, so yeah, yeah. I, I like the idea of taking what Anthony William talks about with regard to protein and then you know, putting our spin on it based on our, you know, clinical experience and nutritional knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. also, we've been reading so much the work of Colin Campbell and Walter Longo and so many other doctors mm -hmm. that have really studied the research of um, nutrition and, and protein and how important it is uh, in the diet. So it's great to, to have um, this 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 real research kind of backing yeah, up the scientific the foundation, ideas. which, um, yeah. So anyways, here we go. I think, I think it, we, we need to start the, the conversation on, on protein by just stating that, um, just as all of these people that we just discussed, Colin Campbell and Walter Longo and, um, Anthony William, you know, they all kind of share this understanding that, we are so hyper focused on protein requirements in our society and our world. I mean, when you go to a restaurant and you're, you know, ordering off the menu, some people, some people ask like, or you know, what protein do you want with that? The fact of the matter is that protein is almost. I, I think of it as like a byproduct of nutrition. It's it's in everything. Protein, you know, you can't escape protein, and do you want to share your uh, one day N of one experiment yeah. that you ran yesterday that yeah. we like, to, we like to do on a regular basis. We like to run our own experiments with our own nutrition. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So um, I entered every single thing I ate yesterday into chronometer, which is um, an app or a website that you can go to that basically break, breaks down the nutritional profile of everything you eat in the day, tells you how many carbs and how many fats, and how many proteins uh, you're eating, and also all the nutrients that you're intaking as well. And so we just ate a normal, normal way that we eat yesterday, uh, smoothie in the morning, uh, lots of fruit throughout the day, and then a nice uh, carbohydrate rich meal at the end of the yeah. day, rice, bean, veggies. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, it was around two, 2000 calories. And, uh, the, the breakdown of the, the ratios of the macronutrients was about 90% or no, 80% carbohydrates, about 10% fats and 10% protein. And you may be thinking like, wow, she probably didn't get that much protein, but I actually got like, 45 grams of protein, which is right around where, um, like, like and people on the planet probably 
um, far exceed their recommended daily allowance of protein. Mm -hmm. And and most people say, oh well, it's just protein. It it go it builds your muscles. It's good, but um, but high protein diets have consequences, health consequences that are often just it's it's like kind of swept under the rug. You know, people aren't talking about the protein as being any sort of issue when it comes to health. So we're not talking about, you know, you should just um, limit and you should limit protein for this reason or that one reason or just like for the animals or the environment. It's really about just the health and common sense of, uh, you know, keeping your body functioning optimally. Mm-hmm. So. And, and yeah, I think like a huge point is like what Ben was saying, if you eat whole foods, you're going to get protein. There's actually in 100 calories of broccoli versus 100 calories of steak, there's way more protein oh, yeah. in 100 calories of broccoli, which you wouldn't think about. So it's, it's really, it's, it's everywhere. It's in most food. If you're eating whole foods, not so much processed foods, but um, eating foods in the form that we're really meant to eat them. Uh, there's plenty of protein. So. Sure. And that, you know, some people, so maybe we'll dive into some myths about protein. Um, one that is extremely common and pervasive is that we need to be very mindful of how we combine amino acids to get complete protein because we're all familiar with the fact that there are essential and non-essential amino acids. There's 20 amino acids that are kind of like the building blocks the you can think of them as like the letters in the alphabet that spells the spell the words that are protein that those are amino acids and we get those you know those are in plant foods and um, backing up a step I guess amino acids are nitrogen based compounds rather than carb, carbon based compounds of carbohydrates um, Big right. truck. Got a truck going <laughs> by. Uh, <laughs> So the nitrogen-based compounds of amino acids are actually created in the plants by bacteria in the soil. These so-called nitrogen-fixing bacteria, they create the nitrogen required to build amino acids that build the proteins in the plants. And um, nine of these amino acids are only found in plants. They, they are not present in the body. Um, or they, 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 we require them intake uh, nutritionally we can't biosynthesize them the other 11 amino acids can be biosynthesized in the body so we we talk about you know a complete protein containing all 20 amino acids so we don't have to realize protein and plant protein are different you know they do have different amino acid profiles you know plant animal protein for example has higher amounts of arginine and um cysteine and some of the sulfur based amino acids and you know there are there is research that shows that these high levels of these amino acids actually drive diseases like cancer and and that kind of stuff so that's where the animal protein cancer research comes into play um but yeah when it comes to the I was talking, combining, yeah, combining I was talking about this acids. myth of, oh, you better be, you know, better eat your rice and your beans to get the complete protein. Um, you know, yes, yes. And if you're eating any sort of variety in your diet, if you're, as long as you're not just crunching on celery sticks and <laughs> carrots, you're going to have no deficiency of any one amino acid. Um, you can mark my words. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah. And obviously, we also need a healthy digestive system so that we can break down and absorb these individual amino acids to be rebuilt into the proteins that make up, you know, our flesh and blood. Every Everything is protein. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, um, I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about what these health experts and researchers um, claim are some of the the negative effects of eating too much protein. And um, there's a lot of focus mainly on how how taxing it can be on both the kidneys and also the liver. And so I guess we can start with the liver. Um, the, the main reason behind why so much protein can, can cause some strain on the liver is because when you eat 
high protein foods, they're usually accompanied with a lot of fat. Yeah. Um, if you think about any form of meat, um, any form of, if you're eating, like for those who are plant-based, if you're eating a ton of nuts to get your protein, you're still gonna get a lot of fat. And um, over time, really high fat diets cause stress on the liver and, the, and fatty, fatty tissue can start to form within the liver, which then forms a sluggish liver, which then leads to so many other yeah. health issues. Fatty liver is really like an epidemic uh, health condition that is at the root of so many other chronic diseases. Um, and, you know, it's called fatty liver. And there's a lot, there's some research that says, you know, things like high fructose corn syrup and high carbohydrate diets lead to fatty liver. But what we know, based on kind of digging a little bit deeper into the science, that it's really the processed fats and the animal fats that lead to fatty liver. Um, and, you know, maybe some junk food, which, in, you know, refined, when you think about refined carbohydrates, there's usually, and, you know, no one's sitting there eating like spoonfuls of flour or sugar. <laughs> you know, if it, we don't recommend that, but those kind of things are usually mixed with butter or, or hydrogenated, or hydrogenated oil. oils. <laughs> you know, it's it's not it's not necessarily like we've said like numerous times in other discussions. It's not necessarily pointing the finger at the carbs or the fat, but really this combination that. Is kind of a, a deadly combination mm -hmm. like yeah but yeah so protein protein if you're focused on getting in a lot of protein the byproduct the byproduct of that is that you'll be taking in a lot of fat as well yeah so I want to talk for a second as well on protein supplements protein bars protein powders these kind of things so that is one way to get a lot of protein without the fat that might be, you might think, oh, well, that might be like a healthier way to get your protein is in a, a protein powder. And it turns out that a lot of the plant-based protein powders like um, like rice, rice-based protein, hemp protein, these kind of things, they're actually pretty rel relatively high in carbohydrates as well. And All right, we're back. Um, so we've been, we're using the hotspot, you know, this might be a great segue into our, our van life <laughs> adventure, but um, we're using a hotspot for internet, of course, and the phone like overheated for some It overheated, reason. it was plugged in and yeah. creating a hotspot and live on Instagram. Yeah, so. we were, you know, we we're asking a lot from, the, from our technology. <laughs> so anyways, we're back, part two of uh, this protein conversation. You were talking about protein powders. I was talking about protein powders, thank you very much. So protein powders are, is a way of getting, you know, we think isolated proteins and amino acids into our diet without too much fat and that sort of thing. And um, we, use, we use protein powders. To be honest, I don't know why people use protein powders. I think people use protein powders to um, build muscle and also to like curb your appetite and to pr provide some satiation and some additional calories. Um, but, but we need to remember back to kind of basic biochemistry that cellular energy is really the most important thing and proteins don't go to create cellular energy unless we are carbohydrate deficient in which we can transfer um, protein into glucose through a process of gluconeogenesis that creates, you know, elevated blood sugar to be used as energy. So it's really, you know, if you're with me this this much, it's really not an efficient way to create energy. Um, mm -hmm. And or even build muscle. Or even build muscle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What Anthony Williams says for those fans out there is that the three things you need are carbohydrates, minerals, and to use to your use muscle. Them. Use yeah. your muscle. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah. So lots so, of fruit and lots of you like celery juice for a source for minerals. of minerals. Yeah. So um, yeah. yeah. And I mean honestly it's it's what I've been experiencing. I I focused on high protein throughout most of my life. Throughout college I was a big athlete. And um, honestly now that I'm focusing more on eating whole foods that are 
higher in carbohydrates, I do feel so much stronger. I feel like my muscles have 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 grown and my my physical activity hasn't even, you know, increased that much. So same here. So that's my experience. <laughs> same here. Same here. I I also eat um I eat the same way that Susanna does. Usually about 10% of calories from protein, which equates to somewhere around 50 grams of protein a day, 40 to 50. And yeah, um, energy levels are better than ever. I um, feel like I'm maintaining and probably growing muscles the more that I use them. Also, the digestive system is so much better. I mean, this might be too much information, but I remember on a high-protein diet, gas is really smelly, and there's a lot of gas. The more protein you eat, the smellier the gas is going to be. And and on a high-carbohydrate diet, that's not really an issue. <laughs> yeah, and the reason why that is is because protein is really metabolically challenging to break down and digest, and it takes a lot of energy and enzymes and it's just a, quite a process, mm -hmm. and the result is usually protein maldigestion or malabsorption to some extent if you're on a high-protein diet, and then that protein that doesn't get digested and absorbed putrefies in the gut, mm -hmm. leads to SIBO and you know bacterial overgrowth and dysbiosis in the gut mm -hmm. and gas and bloating. Um, and yet, those people are put on a low-carb diet, um, which inherently means high-fat, high-protein. So it's kind of backwards, a lot of uh, the orthodox um, approach to nutrition and protein. So hopefully this information clarifies and cuts through it. Do you want to talk about kidneys for a brief moment? Kidneys. Yeah, well... Yeah, I mean, protein strains the kidneys. Mm -hmm. That's you know, when when people have kidney disease, they're put on a low, they're protein, on a low diet. protein diet, and um, so so that's evidence. You know, at least at least orthodox medicine has got that one straight. That um, you know, people are put on a low protein diet for kidney disease to take the strain off the kidneys. And the way I think, like you know, in Chinese medicine, kidneys are kind of the source of life that they're like uh, the source of the life force and so from that perspective you want to preserve that life force throughout your life not only when your life force is declining you know as in kidney disease but you want to preserve that life force throughout your life with a lower protein diet so that your life force isn't strained by too much protein mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess to kind of like wrap things up, um, we don't hate protein at all. No. Um, we're just we saying get, we that get 40 to 50 we get grams. lots of it, but yeah. we get it through whole foods. And so if you're eating a whole food diet, you don't have to worry about protein. And you can, you can check your chronometer every now and then and make sure that you're getting all the amino acids that are required for normal, yeah. healthy functioning. And yeah. every time we do check, they're totally normal getting adequate protein and it's also important to know that things like a chronometer are a, a good estimate because yeah, because the protein in foods and in animals in plants and in animals is dependent upon what those plants and animals eat right um, so it depends on the soil um, it depends on what the animals are you know what what the cow is consuming in the field, whether it's grass or corn, of course, you know. So um, every carrot stick has a you know different amount of different glycine or <laughs> one amino acid over another. But like I said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about protein. If you want to focus on one thing in your diet, my personal favorite thing to focus on is fiber. And maybe we'll do a talk on fiber down the road and why focusing on fiber is the thing to focus on. But not fiber supplements. Not fiber supplements. Fiber in your food. Fibrous foods. If you haven't, if you haven't picked it up thus far with us here at Alter Health, we like to call supplements supplemental. And they are used to supplement something, which is typically our diet, our nutrition, <laughs> our life. 
So we, we like to focus on the bulk of it, which is <laughs> not the supplement, like filling in the gaps. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Well, that's about it in terms of protein. Yeah. I mean, if any we, of our listeners have any questions? Yeah, of course. We love, we love taking questions. And um, we also wanted to, I don't know how we're doing on time. I think we've gone between the two videos about 20 25 minutes. 25 minutes, yeah. 25? Uh, 23. Okay. Yeah, we were going to also fill in, fill in the crowd on where we're at in our adventure. I guess we can just do that in a snippet. Yeah. What do you, yeah. Where are we? We are in central Montana in Lewiston, and um, we rerouted our trip drastically due to the, to the wildfires in British Columbia. Our original plan was to drive through BC and camp in Jasper and Banff for a few nights. But we, you know, it's funny, last week we were talking about surrendering, and here again we had this beautiful opportunity to surrender to just the natural course of these forest fires that have redirected, redirected us in really interesting ways. We've met really cool people along the road. I um, <laughs> guess we could call them cool people. Yeah, and, and oh, now, yeah, we have, yeah, we have. And now we're headed out to Northern Minnesota, which I've always wanted to explore, but never. You can't forget already. about North Dakota, though. And, oh, and North Dakota, <laughs> yes. North Dakota, Minnesota, <laughs> Northern Wisconsin, and finally Northern uh, Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Mm -hmm. The UP. Yeah. So. So next time we talk in a week, we might be in the UP. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're kind of, you know, dashing through these states slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. So until next time, um, sending you all peace and love and eat food, not too much, mostly plants. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. All right, peace and love. Bye-bye. <laughs>